Trevin Nell, three, got it! Trevin Nell! Dallin Hall hit the gas. We're hungry to get better, and we're hungry to be pros about this, and we're hungry to, like, become a really, really good team. Welcome back. We are live in Studio B with your day-to-day -day BYU Sports play-by-play. -play. I'm Spencer Linton alongside Jerem Jordan. Earlier today, Jerem had an opportunity to speak with the assistant basketball coach, Cody Feger, and a Green Bay Packers fan, no less, Jerem. Yeah, I, I didn't bring it up, but he did. <laughs> of course he did. All part of a loaded conversation on game day, Jerem Jordan one-on-one -on -one with Cody Feger. I don't know what you expected, Cody, when Ned came out. Probably high, given Ken Palm and AP poll and whatnot. But number two in the country, were even you guys surprised by high, how high you are right now? Um, you know, just with how we've been playing, I thought we'd be in the top five for sure. Um, but we were pretty, pretty pumped to see us at number two. And obviously, we know it's early in the season. Um, but we're, we're happy with how we're playing right now. There's a lot of kind of that rhetoric, right? Like, hey, it's early, it's early. You got to enjoy the hike up to the spot and the view, right? But the hike needs to be enjoyable. Otherwise, why hike? Um, this journey so far has been incredible. Take me back to last year when this team ends the season. You're fifth in the WCC. You don't accomplish a lot of the goals you wanted. But you knew that you had a group that maybe could do something. What kind of work did it take to get a very similar group to this point right now? Yeah, I mean, just think about all the, the, the games last year, you know. Um, we had some good ones, right? Beating Creighton. Uh, we had three close games with St. Mary's, two close games with Gonzaga. Like, you could feel this team from last year kept on getting better throughout the season, you know? And no matter what was going on, what was being said in the public, this or that, guys were coming to show up, show up and working every day and just working their tail off and, and just getting closer and closer. Dallin and Jackson and, you know, Spencer and Foose and... Like, I could go down the line, Noah Waterman, all these guys just kept on getting closer and closer. Um, and then Trevin on the side, you know, he was kind of sitting out all last year, but he had a great the voice. the shot doctor thing. Yeah, yeah, he had a great voice, and he just wanted to be a part um, last year. And then as soon as the season ended, we just started with work, workouts right away, and the guys just got closer and closer. And then we went to Europe. I uh, had an unbelievable trip over there. Um, played four really good games over there. Um, and, and just we, I can go down the line of all the things that just help this team get closer and closer, but those are some of the main ones. I guess the only loss you've actually had was in Europe. You played a really good pro team, what, in, in Croatia, <coughs> in, I think? In Zadar, yeah. In Zadar, yeah. That's the only team that's been here <laughs> since March, um, yeah. which is crazy. And, it, and it's wild to think, and everyone talks about it, hey, you want to get old and stay old. And the rhetoric around BYU is, eh, they're old. Well, legitimately, you have the first and third oldest players in college basketball. What advantage actually is that? Like, what's tactile about that kind of age and experience with this group? Well, the age and experience is, it's everything, right? Last year, we were, what, 297th in the country last year. And this year, we're, I mean, we're, we're, but we're in the Thanks top. to Ken Palm, we can look yeah, this Yeah, up. thanks to Ken Palm. I should, <laughs> I should know that. But, um, yeah, we're, I think we're in the top 80 this year. Um, and and the mini, mini, minutes continuity, mm -hmm. that's huge. Um, but just you're able to see everything, right? You, you grow from experience at the end of the day, right? Like even look at Jordan Love with the Packers right now. Of course right? you bring up the Packers. <laughs> but, mentioned there, but finally, yes, we finally won, great but winning against Chiefs. Yeah. No, it just takes time and, yep. and takes experience. And these guys were freshmen and sophomores last year. Right, they were freshmen, sophomores. Now they're sophomores and juniors, and they're still growing together, uh, playing together, and really enjoying each other's company and, and playing for each other. It, 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 how connected these guys are, it's it's awesome. It's fun basketball to watch. And when you uh, you know gain another year, you don't automatically get better though. Why did this team get so much better collectively, other um, than just getting older? Uh, other than just getting all their all our, all our individual workouts and the time they spent together, like that, that's it. They're they're trusting each other more and more, and you know that like trust is everything. Mm -hmm. You know, you know last year's group, Noah, Rudy, those guys didn't come in until the end of September and start working out until October. This this group right now has been working for a year and you know three months now, and uh, no, a little bit longer than that. Yeah, the year and three months, and and they're still. You know, just kind of building and being connected, and, and the trust is just growing and, and understanding what we're looking for offensively and defensively. That's, that's a huge thing, you know. A lot of these guys come in as junior college transfers, 
or transfer from other Division One programs in high school, and it, it just it just takes time and and you know learning the systems and what we're looking for and and how to be a successful player, right? That takes time. I'm told 21st in minutes continuity. So that's 21st, pretty that's pretty you. good, right? Thank, thank you, you, Ken Palm. Thank you, uh, Colton Potter, our producer. All right, cool. Okay, this group uh, seven and zero. You talked about the uh, connection. There are a ton of stats that are really high for BYU right now. Yeah. I'm not just talking like team metrics. I'm talking like numbers of the way you're rebounding, where you're shooting, the amount of threes you're getting up, and, and the relative points you know, uh, from threes and whatnot, all this stuff, block, percentage. What's one of your favorite stats that really kind of tells the story of this team right now? Um, my favorite one personally is assist opportunities. Um, and year one, we're about, you know, with TJ Hawes, Jake, Yoli, those guys, Zach Selyus, Dalton, Barcelo, we were number, uh, we were about 35, I want to say, assist opportunities a game. And that's top 10% of college basketball. Yeah, awesome. and assist opportunities is, we count assists, uh, but it's also, you make the extra pass and maybe the guy misses the shot. Or you get in the paint, you make the right play, and the guy misses the shot. We still count that as an assist opportunity. And so right now, I think we're averaging about 45 assist opportunities a game. And so we know we're making aggressive plays for our teammates and we're playing for each other. Like, that's just, that's huge for us. That's a stupid number. That's ridiculous. <laughs> that, that's ridiculously <laughs> high. And it's really fun. Sean Farnham kind of encapsulated how well this team shoots by saying, I think it was NC State, in their shoot-around, they put a green jersey on all the shooters and there were constantly four out there. Foos would like to think that there's five. Yeah. Uh, he has three for four the last <laughs> two years from three. Speaking of Foos, out for a bit, yet it feels like this team hasn't dropped off at all. Ali Khalifa didn't practice for a while. He jumps in. He's been spectacular. Atiki Ali Atiki's out there doing his thing. Super efficient. His per 40 numbers are really high. What has it taken in spite of no Dawson Baker to start the season, no Ali Khalifa, now no Foos for a little bit, to maintain the standard of what this team hopes to continue to do? I think it's just, at the end of the day, the standard is we're all playing together at all times, right? Like, like we talked about being connected. And, um, you know, Foos is such a huge presence. Um, offensively, right, scoring on the block and just screening and rolling that uh, we're just going to do it as a collective group, right? I think we're average. We have six guys over 10 points a game right now, and the seventh is at nine. Yep. Um, so we're just going to do it collectively. That's, that's what we're doing. We're picking up for each other. One guy goes down, the next guy's got to step up, and we're all playing together, right? We got we to gotta tweak a couple things offensively. Maybe we'll throw Spencer Johnson in the post a little bit more, uh, Ali at different times. Um, but now our half-court offense is just a little bit different and a little bit smoother with different passing and things like that. Um, so it's just, just a collective group, man. Every, everyone's stepping up. We've had how many different score, leading scores in every game? I think we're at six. That's um, silly. Typically that's two or three at this point. Yeah, especially you know, these after, main guys. after seven games. Yep. And it's just awesome. Everybody's stepping up. Jackson just had his career high. Dallin, back to back. Yeah, Dallin Nixon or Dallin, Dallin uh, Hall just had his career high against, um, you know, San Diego State. And, you know, guys are just making plays for each other. It's, it's incredible to watch. Let's talk about Spencer Johnson, the Instapot. He is one of 14 players averaging 12, 5, and 5. It's taken a sec to sort of tweak his role a little bit with a couple more shooters, Trevin and whatnot. Um, he's not shooting the three like he was last year, but it, it doesn't matter because his assists are up to five a game. Like, what are, what are we doing here? He is awesome. He has a behind-the-back assist uh, against Fresno State. What has it taken for him to kind of tweak that role a little bit and be even more efficient overall? Yeah, I mean, Spencer's uh, goal the whole time to be the most efficient player, right? I remember three years ago, him coming in our, our coaching staff's offices and watching different film on how to be efficient. And every year, he's just gotten more and more efficient. Um, and his passing, like you said, is off the charts. And Spencer, he knows what this game's all about. He doesn't want another year. Like, he just wants to win. And that's the best part about him. And he's so dang efficient. Um, he's a pass first guy. Like he, he was a point guard in high school. Mm. So he's a pass first guy. And obviously he can score it also on the block and coming off ball screens and this and that. But he's just one of those guys that just tries to uh, help the team no matter what it is. And, and at the end of the day, he's an incredible defender too, right? He, he changed the game against, um, I forget what the first game of our year. Um, I want to say maybe Houston Christian where he just got two stops in a row in layups and he's an incredible defender, incredible teammate, incredible leader. 
American Fork Guy. Tonight features some more American Fork Guys. Got Trey Stewart, of course, and his high school teammate Tanner Cuff, who plays for Evansville. They won the 2019 state title. Um, Evansville's interesting. 7-1 and one and uh, number 92 in the net. And a kind of a sneaky, <coughs> trappish game, given that Utah is Saturday. So what's the focus been like for this group to try and get to 8-0 and tonight? Yeah, the whole focus um, by our staff and our players has just been focused on one game at a time and just getting better with what we do well, right? Um, you know, Evansville's an incredible team. Um, the coach is a great dude. He does a great job with those guys. Former Utah it's, State assistant. Yeah, former yep. Utah State assistant. David um, Raglan. He, yeah, David Raglan. He's in his second year. Um, you know, they, they play a bunch of different kind of changing defenses with, uh, you know, they'll switch, switch a ton of off-ball stuff. Um, you know, offensively, they've got, they've got a four-man who can really score the ball coming from an NAIA school. He's playing at a really high level, averaging about 18 a game. We'll have some NBA scouts here tonight to watch mm. him. How many? Uh, I don't know exactly, Handful. but I know we'll have some. Yeah. Nice. Um, so they got a really good team, played really well together. He's got those guys really connected right now. I mean, they were one of the worst teams in the country last year, and they're taking five wins, seven wins already. Yeah, yeah. and taking a huge, huge step this year. Um, so it, it's been. Uh, you know, it'll be an exciting game, but we're focusing on ourselves, what we do well, our transition offense, uh, keeping the turnovers down, um, going to the offensive glass, every single possession wedging, right? We're doing an incredible job doing that. Um, our ball screen defense, our transition defense, and, and you know, guarding our yards. Those are, those are the important six things that we're always worried about. Okay, again, million percent focus on Evansville, but we found out that Bill Walton's going to be on the call on the Pac-12 Network Saturday. What's the funnest or weirdest story you have about Bill Walton at a shoot around over the years? <laughs> um, I'll tell you, my favorite thing was uh, the last time we had Bill Walton was in Maui. And I would say we were playing UCLA in the Maui Invitational 2019. Um, and it was just such a fun game, right? That was Coach Cronin's, I think, first year. And we played so well. And I don't have a great story about, you know, I just remember him asking a ton of questions and things like that. But my favorite thing was listening to the call after the game, you know. Um, I think it was like three or four days later because we had, you know, Kansas and, and Virginia Tech after that. But I just wanted to hear him talk about our team and, and everything and he was talking about. facts about the Yeah, and talking about and, yeah. Jake Toulson, <laughs> TJ Hawes, yep. and, you know, him getting mad at the NCAA for Yoli Childs not playing. Yep. Uh, I mean, I, I just, I mean, he's a legend, and it's, it's fun to listen to him, and here's what he's got to say. There are those who are not as big of fans. I'm a huge fan, personally, and my best Bill Walton story is that he put an entire paragraph of information to Kyle Chilton, the sports information yeah. director, a couple years ago, in the subject line. It wasn't in the body of the email, just all in the subject line. And Kyle's like, what is that? <laughs> it's Bill Walton emailing you. It, it happens. Well, thanks for coming in. Best of luck tonight, and uh, good luck against the Purple Aces of Evansville. I appreciate you. Thanks. Cody Feger on BYU Sports Nation. BYU trying to get to 8-0 no, against a team that's top 100 in net. They're, I stand corrected. They're 90 in net now, not 92. So, uh, wow. Let's go.